All right. Anyway, we've we've spent enough time on bugs. Um, I can't say the main event because it wasn't even advertised as the main event. That was McIntyre and Lashley. They did call it the main event on commentary. But they, well, I can't call it, but they called it the main event on commentary, even though it wasn't advertised as same. For one of the women's championships, Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. And you said, don't you dare skip this, Jim. Everybody wants to know what you have to say. <sighs> Is this what it's come to? We've said sometimes you have a a match and you have, you need a stadium, and other times you have a stadium need a match. Is it now that to prove that the women are equal, that they have to put this match on last? For it, it, is this what it's come that they have whittled the wrestling audience down so far to just the diehards and the people that are left that they don't see anything wrong? with the last match at WrestleMania is a girls match. And I'm not faulting their effort. I don't, I last year at WrestleMania, my favorite match was Charlotte and Rhea Ripley. I would have thought they were crazy if they put that on last as the main event too. But like we said earlier in the program, it doesn't really matter anymore because they don't need to sell pay-per-views. They don't need to sell live event tickets. They're on a guarantee from the network and the cock. So now they can just make the, the girl wrestling fans happy. If this match had been on any, on, on any WrestleMania in any other spot, fine. It was a great girls match. They, they did well. A lot of gymnastics that I wasn't really fond of. I pr much prefer the workers. These two girls are better than any of the men in AEW. So it, it was certainly not a bad match, or but Austin Rock, Andre Hogan, Taker, Michaels, Hogan, Warrior, Bel Air and Banks. Is this just what it is now that that the only people left watching wrestling don't mind that it that when two five foot three inch hundred and thirty pound girls are in the main event? Let me ask you a question, Brian. If the NBA and the WNBA decided to play their championship games in the same arena on the same night, which one would go on last? If it was the NBA and the WNBA would be the NBA, I don't know if that's a fair comparison to this. Why is it not? Because based on the reaction to the audience, Sasha Banks is as over as any of their guys. I on know the entire show. that's part of the problem. They have pussified pro wrestling down to where the if, if 30 years ago, people would have rioted. If instead of blood and violence and people trying to kill each other, they got a fucking girls match for their main event. But now it's just, eh, it's another funny. Yeah. But it was yeah. great. I, I can't believe you're shitting on this in any way. I'm it, not shitting. It was, on was there a better match on WrestleMania night one? Was there a better match on WrestleMania than this match? I, I honestly, I liked um, Cesaro and fucking. Uh, I, I like, as a matter of fact, Steen and Steen and Zane. We'll get to that, but I liked Cesaro and uh, Seth. Uh, but of course, there was no heat to it. There was heat to the girls, but I'm yeah, and it was a great moment. You know what? The Bianca Belair crying and being emotional about this. The moment of WWE. Remember last year when we watched NXT? You and I both said. Rhea Ripley's a breakout star. She could be big. And I said, and you kind of agreed at the time, I see Bianca Belair too. And now they took both of these women and on two different nights gave them the world titles in their various women's divisions. So it's a big moment. It was the best. I think it was the best match on WrestleMania it, night. Well, one. and I, okay, I will say this. Belair and Banks was better than Ripley and Oscar. And we'll get to why that was yeah. here shortly. And that, and that spot at the end with her whipping her hair, I, I'm sure you'll get to it, but... How did I, she make the hair whip sound like a bullwhip? Man, Dutch Mantel should be jealous right now of well, how that sounds. I don't sounded. even know what is, is... Is there a coating on that ponytail or braid or whatever? How would that even do that? I think if you take anything that long that's rope-like or something and you 
snap it like that, it will I, give you some kind of sound. I do have some familiarity with different <laughs> textures of sure whips do. and things that can be used. And I've, I've personally never left a mark like that on anybody with a, a braided. Nevertheless. Um, but I loved it. I actually know, thought this was when I said I was left at the end of WrestleMania night one, like, wow, you know what? They did things kind of okay for WWE tonight. It was because this match ended it. I came out of things with a very positive mindset. The only match involving females that I can think of that would have served as a WrestleMania main event was Angle and Rousey against Triple H and Stephanie. Because not only was that a brilliant pro wrestling match, almost flawlessly executed and wonderfully laid out, which makes sense because it was his wife involved in it, but also the the story, the personal issue, and the personalities, the people were batshit insane over it, and it was it was over. And I don't even know if I would have made that a main event. But that's that's just me. I'm just remembering when lots of people watched this stuff rather than the very, very small audience pool that we are drawing from now. Both of them are great, but they're five foot three and 130 pounds, and they're girls. And I'm going to be sexist about that because once again, I draw the comparison between the NBA and the WNBA. Th this match if, was definitely, it was good enough to be on WrestleMania or any other show. It was good enough to fucking, it was better than anything AEW could probably do with the men or women. But on last at WrestleMania, I'm sorry, this is what it's come to. Not only have we pussified wrestling to the point where no nobody's afraid of the guys, but there's as many females matches as there is men's matches when that should be an attraction instead of a goddamn half and half situation. Cause as we've mentioned numerous times, there's barely any good male wrestlers these days. And there's a lot less good female wrestlers than there are male wrestlers. So when you're having half and half, you're by necessity diluting your talent pool down to people that are not necessarily the best at their profession because you're picking a, g a gender rather than talent. And I think if you wanted to take a big look at wrestling in the last 20 years and try to evaluate whether or not so many women's wrestlers and divisions being pushed so heavily on TV and given so many segments, whether that's being detrimental to pro wrestling and to the fan base, Maybe there's something there to study and look at, but when it comes to this show, Sasha Banks was as over as anyone on that show, and if the WNBA had a player who really took off in society, if like, you know, a crossover star, a Dr. J, a LeBron James, Michael Jordan, whoever it may be, Kareem, if the WNBA had a star like that, then you may see something where it's like, wow, this is a big WNBA game and people will really care. They don't have that. But Sasha Banks is super over with that audience. Now, whether there was a separate WWE women's show with just the women's talent, would it do good without them being on Raw and SmackDown? I don't know. But I think when it comes to this WrestleMania card, this was the best match of night one, and the fans were into it. The fans were into the finish. The fans were into the two wrestlers. They were really into Sasha. So I... I I, I chalk I chalk that up to the fact that most of the guys suck. But I, and again, <laughs> I, I don't disagree with you, and I think the guys' feuds typically are garbage. But I don't care. It's just I'm just tired of just phony, politically correct. What would have been a better finish, men and women's of everything else on night one? What would have been a better finish to the show? A better match to end the night with, I should say. I say you put your world championship match on last, and if it can't follow everything else, you pick the wrong guy to be the champion and the wrong guy to challenge for it. See, Vince did give them the happy ending for night one. It just wasn't the men's heavyweight championship. It was the women's Raw? I think it was Raw. The women's Raw well, and, and there's another thing. When you've, when, you've got, <laughs> when you've got two world champions of each gender in one company, it's fucking ridiculous. And every match is for the title because everybody's got one. It's fucking stupid. It looks like Nick Goulas' Night of Champions, where he just, every once in a while, he'd book the Night of Champions and get some extra belts he had laying around and put titles on people to advertise them defending them. Anyway.
Closing thoughts on night one. Well, closing thoughts from you on that match. Uh, you know, we briefly mentioned the finish with her whipping her hair, but the actual I, match itself, I, did you have any problem with the match itself? No, I didn't have any problem. I said it was it was a good girls match. It was for the WWE, and it was better than anything that AEW does, men or women, most of the time. And these girls are athletes, and they're highly trained. There was a lot of cartwheeling and shit. I know they got the gymnastics background. I just can't get interested. Unless it's... Uh, uh, and to be honest, you know, I'm not trying to knock every girl wrestler I've ever known. Uh, there have been many good ones. I was a big fan of Mickey James's. I, I love uh, Miss Texas, Jackie Moore, Jazz. None I, of them I, ever got over like Sasha Banks has. Um, but that's when you would see a girls match on the card most of the time. Now it's just constant. And I'm just tired of it. I'm like, I'm tired of the three ways. Like I'm tired of the, I never thought I'd say those words. Like I'm tired of the, <laughs> like I'm tired of the goddamn garbage furniture matches and weapons matches and the no DQ matches and everything. And, and it, it just, eh. Well, I'll say for the record, this was my favorite match of the two nights of WrestleMania. I thought it was great. I thought it was a great way to end the night. I thought seeing actual genuine emotion from Bianca Belair was nice. Whenever you see anything genuine in WWE, it's a wonderful feeling. And I think it's cool that two women that we saw in NXT a year ago, year and a half ago, are both now the two women's champions in WWE because those are the women you could probably build around for the future. And you know, the, I, I, the girls and I guess probably now the guys, they are legitimately emotional and crying when they win these titles. It's nice to see, though. You can't criticize that. That's nice to see. Well, it, it works for I this. I just don't know how I, I... It's good to see. It's good television. But I don't know how that I feel about it actually being real. They're really crying over... <sighs> I used to get a charge whenever I knew we were getting the belts because, fuck, that means we're going to be in the main events. Do you think we're Dusty... On top. Do you think Dusty ever actually shed a tear? When he got the world title? Oh, are you out of your mind? His, his fucking accountant probably shed a couple of tears. Well, this is going to be complicated, but no, it it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't a crying thing. It was like, yeah, we're the top fucking guys, or I'm the top fucking guy, or this is going to be a hell of a run, or we're going to make some money, or boy, those goddamn, we're going to be on the main events on all this, God, whatever, not, oh, I'm, it's my boyhood dream, or my girlhood dream. That's the story you're supposed to tell, not what's actually... All right. Well, you know, I will say I really liked this match. I thought it was great. Best, no best match of WrestleMania. Liked it so much, I may send an image of it to my skylight frame. <laughs> well, that way you would never forget it. There would be a picture, that not even a picture, but multiple pictures of the entire procedure and all of the combatants and the finish and and all the pyro and everything, because the skylight frame, you don't just frame one picture, you can frame multiple pictures, because it's all, uh, not electronic, but how do they say it these days? It's it's all done digital. through the... Digital, that's what it is. That's the word that I was searching for to come out of my face. Uh, the skylight frames, you get these things, and you can set up a photo uh, sideshow, si sideshow, slideshow a photo sideshow or slideshow. So you can see multiple pictures. You can email pictures to these frames and they pop up right there wherever you've sent it to a family member or a close friend. It looks like a real photo frame, but even the least tech-savvy people can use it. It sets up in under 60 seconds. Got a 10-inch touch screen so you can swipe through all the pictures you've got stored with your finger. You can tap it and thank the person that sent your picture. Uh, you can get it for someone and you can send them multiple pictures. I always thought that this would be good in the pandemic if you're wanting to send some candid photography to someone you love. But anyway, whatever the case, however you want to use the <laughs> skylight frame. It is funny. Instead what? of text, instead of sexting the photo, you just send it right to the frame. That there is, you get It's already framed. That's pretty nice. It's a good there idea. There you go. It, <laughs> and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, dick pics have never looked so classy as when they're in a skylight frame. 
folks, and, and one Facebook review said that this this gives her a little glimpse of us every day. So if you want to give somebody a little glimpse of you, get them a skylight frame, send that picture to them. It pops up there. You can start a whole thing. Anyway, right now, you can... You can for the record, it's for the whole family. For the whole family to enjoy. Depending on what kind of family you got. You can get $10 <laughs> off your purchase of a skylight frame. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E, skylightframe.com. Enter the code DRIVE, D-R-I-V-E, and get $10 off your purchase. Skylightframe.com, enter code DRIVE for your loved ones, your family, your friends, your paramours, significant others, whatever the case. Send those pictures, whether clothed or unclothed, whether <laughs> candid or posed. Please stop it. Whatever they may be, <laughs> you can send pictures of these things, and the Skylight Frame people will. We'll love you. And you will love Skylight Frame. I have one yes, right they, outside yes, my office, and I very, very much love it. And I've sent one to my dad. They're fantastic. Candid photography? No, I have pictures of me and the family and Swami and Keith oh. Hernandez and Daryl Strawberry and various what? other Mets of renown. You have pictures of renowned Mets on your Skylight Frame in your home? Well, you got to mix it up. You come up the stairs. You don't know who you're going to see. Will it be Suzanne? Will it be Swami? Well, be Dwight Gooden. You don't know. Okie dokie. Keith Hernandez, Rusty Staub. So many great yeah. Mets throughout the years. Yeah, I, I remember Rusty Nail. Um, 